Hey, this is Old Man Metal. I hope everyone's doing good, and welcome to the 15th episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. And today we're going to take a look at my new daily carry knife, the Nakamura 44S-1 from Benchmade. So thank you for joining me today, and thanks to AJ Nemesis for the theme music. That's from a song called Through the Electric Mist. AJ is a great guitarist and independent musician, and he's provided music for this show since day one, so thanks to him. Please go check him out. The link to his channel is in the show notes. And we got to have a beer too, so we'll do something about that. This time it is going to be Surf Wax IPA from Burial Beer Company in Asheville. This is a beer that I drank a lot of. It's a West Coast style IPA with a bit of the East Coast influence. It's brewed with Columbus and Centennial hops, which are both uh, typically West Coast hops. A bit of a pour there, got some good head. I guess that's a good thing. Um, and it's also got uh, Citra and Mosaic, which is sort of the East Coast one-two punch that you see uh, in the classic East Coast hazy beers. and. Um, it does have a little bit of a haze to it, so it's sort of got a little bit of an East Coast thing going on. Mm. And it is good, and that one's really fresh. And I drink a lot of it. So, cheers to Burial for brewing it. Cheers to you for being here to enjoy it with me. Mm. And cheers to wherever I bought it from, excuse me. And I can't remember if it was uh, Lowe's Foods or Best Way. It was one or the other, so cheers to whoever I bought it from. So the business of the day is the Benchmade Nakamura 44S-1, which is the semi-serrated version of the 44-1. Um, I picked it up last August as a replacement for the knife that I've been carrying, and it's been sitting in a drawer ever since waiting for me to do this episode. That was sort of my inducement to do the episode. I don't get to start using the new knife until I do the episode, so... The pocket knife I've been carrying since November of 2017, the one that I'm replacing, is the Benchmade Nakamura 484S, which is the semi-serrated version of the 484. And I made a video about that knife early on, that was episode 3, and it was a pretty good in-depth look at the knife after about two years of experience of uh, carrying it daily. Now I'm about four and a half years in with the 44S, and I feel the same way about it as I did when I made episode 3. It's a great knife. The lock is still rock solid, fit and finish are un unimpaired rather. Performance from the M390 steel has been really, really good, particularly the excellent edge retention and corrosion resistance. I've spent a bare minimum of time maintaining this knife, and I mean a ridiculously small amount of maintenance time. And when you do sharpen it, you can get it stupid sharp, so that's always a nice thing too. Now the toughness of a material is its ability to absorb energy and deform without fracturing. And for the M390 steel, toughness is a bit over mid-range for good knife steel. That said, the blade generally handled most of the abusive treatment that I dished out to it pretty well, but I was still able to do a bit of damage to the edge at one point, using it for a field expedient wire cutter like an asshole. I also blunted the tip up pretty good, probably using it as a screwdriver, which is another asshole thing to do with a knife. M390 is generally considered to be a difficult steel to sharpen, but about 30 minutes of work with a medium and a fine diamond stone repaired most of that damage, though the tip took a bit more work afterwards. The final verdict, I'm perfectly happy with the Nakamura 44S and the M390 steel. So why change? Well, for the same reason I switched to the 44S in the first place, to play with another steel. So, looking at the two knives, it's obvious there are a lot of similarities. So let's look at how the knives are the same. First off, the dimensions are exactly the same. Closed length is 3.95 inches and overall length is 7.03. The blade length is 3.08 inches and the blade thickness is 0.114 inches. The handle thickness is a chunky 0.57 inches and the weight is a hefty 3.52 ounces. We see the same basic shape for the scales and liners. More about that later. There's the same split arrow clip design, also known as the dick clip. We also have the same excellent jimping, which provides 100% positive grip on the thumb rise. There's the same thumb stud design, and the same modified drop point blade shape, and the same full flat grind. We've got the same tip-up mounting configuration, which is reversible for righty and lefty, and the same thick-ass steel liners and the same open construction, which make it really easy to keep clean. 
Very importantly, we also have the exact same axis lock, which is a super sturdy, super reliable patented lock design. A hooked section on the back of the blade stops against a pin that transfers all the positive forces on the blade to the liner and not the lock itself. And then the lock pin slides over a transverse cut in the blade, locking it into place and transferring any negative pressure on the blade to the liner as well. In four and a half years, I've not had any problems with the axis lock. It still locks up as tight today as it did the first day I had it, and it unlocks just as reliably. Needless to say, I'm a huge fan of the axis lock. As I mentioned in episode three, some people aren't a fan of the thumb studs. They say that they stick out enough that they can snag on the edge of your pocket when you're drawing the knife and open it part way, which would obviously be a really, really bad thing. Personally, I've never had that happen, but when I draw a clip knife, I do tend to rotate it towards the outside of my body, away from the lip of the pocket, so I really think it depends on how you draw the knife. In any event, there are lower profile thumb studs available if you wanted to replace the stock ones, so it is a fixable problem. Some people also have a firm preference for tip-up or tip-down carry, and the 484 series is tip-up only. The clips aren't reversible in that regard. Personally, I've carried both tip-up and tip-down over the years, and I don't have a preference, and it takes me like a day to get used to changing from one to the other, so tip-up or tip-down is completely irrelevant to me. I just don't care. Your mileage, of course, may vary. Um, that said, there are a lot of similarities between the two knives. What are the differences? Well, a lot of them are cosmetic. There's a blue anodized aluminum pivot ring, black thumb studs, black screws, a black clip, blue anodized aluminum spacers, black liners, and a black stop pin for the locking mechanism. The scales are nominally the same shape, like I said earlier, but there are actually some significant differences there. When you look at the two knives together, even from the side you can tell that the grooves cut into the surface of the scales, which correspond to the finger cutouts on the liner and contribute significantly to the grip. They're a lot shallower on the 44S1. The index finger in particular, that's a lot smaller of a cutout on the 44S1. You can also tell there's texturing cut into the scales on the 44S, and that's not the case on the S1. The patterning of the scale material makes it look like the surface is textured, but it's really not. The net result of all that is that the old knife provides a somewhat notably better grip. Not enough to be a problem under ordinary circumstances, but under adverse conditions like if your hands were wet, I think the 44S would have a bit of an advantage in terms of grip. In terms of materials of construction, the 44S scales are G10, which is a fiberglass cloth laminate in resin, and the S1 scales are a carbon fiber laminate in resin, so they're both fiber reinforced resins and they should both be plenty tough and plenty strong, which I've found to always be the case with G10, so I'm willing to call the scale materials a wash. In terms of aesthetics, the carbon fiber scales on the S1 look the best to me. It really is a good looking knife all told and the scales definitely contribute to that. The real difference between the two and the reason I bought the new knife, besides the fact the semi serrated version went out of production and you couldn't get it anymore, which made me really have to have it, is the steel. The 484S uses M390 steel manufactured by Bowler and the 441 series uses CPM S90V steel, which is manufactured by Crucible. They're both Martin Siddick chromium steels, both are produced with particle metallurgy techniques, and both use significant levels of vanadium for improved wear resistance and toughness. Now, I did a deep dive into knife steel in episode three, including looking at elemental composition, phases of carbon steel, the effects of processing and heat treatment, and I took a good look at particle metallurgy technology as well. I'm not gonna rehash all that here, but I do recommend episode three if you want a good introduction to knife steel. Right now, I'm just going to look at how M390 and S90V are the same and how they're different. So they're both high carbon steels that have been hardened using complex heat treatments, including a quench that converts the steel to the martensite phase, which is the hardest phase of the carbon steel alloy. So that's what you want the most of. Both steels employ large amounts of chromium to provide vastly improved corrosion resistance. So they're both classed as stainless steels and they're both manufactured using advanced techniques that involve spray atomizing the alloy into small particles, which are then captured and contained for processing back to normal form under high temperature and pressure. At that point, the steel can be formed and further processed as if it was a traditionally manufactured steel. 
These particle metallurgy techniques allow much greater control over the phases that are formed in the final alloy. They also allow for much better control of grain size and alloy purity. All of this translates into better control over the properties of the finished steel, and that's why a number of particle metallurgy steels have become popular for knife making in the last few decades. Most importantly to my decision making in choosing these steels, both utilize vanadium to form super hard vanadium carbides, which provide world class wear resistance, and that translates into top tier edge retention, which, as I said in episode three, to me is a key property of steel for a daily use knife, because I don't like spending any more time than necessary on knife maintenance. I've got much better things to do. So vanadium is why I decided to try the M390 steel in 2017, and increased vanadium is why I'm trying the S90V steel now. So obviously the two steels have a lot in common. How are they different? I already mentioned vanadium. Uh, S90V has more than twice as much at 9% versus 4% for M390. And as expected, S90V provides better edge retention, which again is key for me. The flip side of this is that the S90V is going to be even more difficult to sharpen than the M390. But as I said, the M390 wasn't too, too bad to sharpen whenever I had to fix it up. According to Benchmade, they hardened their M390 to 60 to 62 Rockwell, and their S90V they hardened to 59 to 61 Rockwell, so the M390 is going to be a bit harder. Out of the box, the 44S1 had a stupid sharp edge, so there's no problem on that front with the hardness of the steel. Given that, it's possible that the steel being a bit softer will be a benefit because the blade will have a bit more flex and it'll be a bit more tolerant of prying type abuse which I am wont to dish out. The decreased carbon content of the M390, 1.9% versus 2.3% for the S90V, leads to the M390 being a significantly tougher steel. Toughness is the ability of a material to absorb energy and deform without fracturing, so it's an important property for avoiding impact damage like chipping and cracking. And that kind of damage is usually accidental versus being caused by improper use and abuse of the knife, like cutting electric fence line, prying shit open, using it for a screwdriver, dumb shit like that. So I may be going to have to be a little bit more careful not to drop the new one or accidentally bang the edge into anything really hard because the steel's maybe not quite as tough as the old steel. Finally, M390 has significantly more chromium. It has 20% versus 14% for the S90V. That leaves the new steel at a disadvantage in terms of corrosion resistance. And this difference I'm not so much worried about because I've carried AUS6, AUS8, and 154 CM extensively, and I've not had an issue with rusting or corrosion on any of them, and they're even less corrosion resistant than S90V. So, what have I done? Essentially, I've traded a bit of hardness, some ease of sharpening, and some toughness and corrosion resistance for improved wear resistance and edge retention. It's a lazy man's bargain. Was it worth it? I'll tell you in a few years. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for joining me today and listening to me talk about my new knife. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please take a second and give the video a like. That's an easy way to tell YouTube that you enjoyed the video and that you want to see more like it. And it's just an all around cool thing to do. So thanks for joining me today. And if you enjoyed it, tell your friends. If your friends don't like it, get new friends. Until next time, keep those horns up high. Take care. listening to Old Man Metal's Musings. All material depicted is the intellectual property of the copyright holders. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is a goddamn shame. Thank you for joining us. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, look no further than the Ratsaw Review Network. Ratsaw Review is taking over the podcast world with plenty of shows to choose from within their network of entertaining programming, including 
The flagship show, Rat Sob Review, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and Lou Mavs, as well as occasional co-hosts Manny Mejias and James Lilquist. We also have the official Rat Sob Review spin-off, such as Album vs. Album, Screams from the Grave, where we discuss beloved yet forgotten hard rock and metal albums of the past, and a King Diamond podcast called This Broadcast Belongs to Them. We've also got Old Man Metal's Musings, the Metal Thrashing Nerd podcast with Metal Thrashing Mike, the Team Otoki podcast featuring Stradivarius and Avalon founding member Team Otoki, the BS Sessions with Mark and Jerry, Just the Cheese Please, a podcast dedicated to cheesy films of the 1980s with Tara J and Adam, and the Music is Live podcast with Lou Mavs. The Rap Style Review Network is your go-to one-stop shop for the best podcasts out there today. Go to RatsawReview.com for more info. And to find out where you can find, follow, subscribe, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. The Ratsaw Review Network. We're, We're taking, taking over. over.